I'm going to walk you through a typical acid-base titration problem and standardization problem and discuss a little bit about um, proper titration technique. So these notes are going to be on acid-base titrations. So you want to make sure an analyzed or base. Again, it is a procedure used to determine the concentration, that would be the molarity, of a sample of acid or base, or actually anything, um, can be titrated analytically, but we're looking at acids and bases, by reacting it with a standard solution. Standard solution, you know the exact molarity of the standard solution. So again, let's look at the key terms so that we can discuss uh, these terms together. A titrant is the solution of known concentration being used in the titration. So this is the substance whose molarity you know. The analyte is the substance that is being analyzed. You do not know its molarity. That is what you're trying to determine. The equivalence point in a titration is when you have added enough titrant to stoichiometrically react exactly in the correct mole ratio with the analyte to neutralize it. The end point is very similar to the equivalence point, but the end point is the point at which the indicator changes color so you can tell that the equivalence point has been reached. So you pick an indicator where the end point and the equivalence point will be the same. Let's go through how you do a standardization calculation because unless you've standardized your substance, you will not be, use it, be able to use it to titrate. We're going to use potassium acid thylate, which is abbreviated KHP, and we're going to standardize our NaOH using this KHP. We make an aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide and we standardize it by titrating it against KHP. And this is the mass, 0 0.1421 of KHP that we're going to use. This is the actual formula for KHP. Again, you've got your potassium, hydrogen, and that is your phthalate ion. As we go through the steps, we want to make sure that when we have finished our titration, which is again, standardization is a titration, it's just a particular way of analyzing our standard that we're going to use to titrate our unknown. The initial reading that we took from the burette containing the NaOH was 0 0.52 milliliters, and when we were finished titrating, the final volume was 32.8. 6 milliliters. Now we need to find the molarity of the NaOH. Let's look at the standardization reaction. Here is your KHP, which is an acid, reacting with your sodium hydroxide to produce your um, sodium, potassium sodium phthalate and water. If you write your complete ionic equation, you cancel out the potassium phthalate ion. You're not interested in that, and you're not interested in the sodium spectator ion. When you're finished, you can see that you have a simple monoprotic H plus plus OH negative gives you H2O, your mole ratio between the H plus and OH negative is a one-to-one -one ratio. So KHP is often used. It's a monoprotic standardizing acid. If we look at the equation, the one-to-one -one mole ratio between the H plus and the OH negative, again the H plus coming from the KHP and the OH negative coming from the NaOH and we look at the volume 
of NaOH that we delivered, this is all we need to carry out our standardization math. So first, we're going to find the moles of KHP that we reacted. So we take our original mass, 0 0.1421 grams of KHP, use the molar mass of KHP, 204.23 grams, is equivalent to one mole, so we get 6.958 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of KHP that was reacted. But we're really interested in the sodium hydroxide. So the next step is to compare the moles of KHP with the moles of sodium hydroxide. And we saw in the previous equation that it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio, but you need to make sure you put this step in and convert from KHP to NaOH. Now we have 6.958 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of the sodium hydroxide. All we have to do to find the molarity of the sodium hydroxide is to take those moles of sodium hydroxide that were present and divide by the volume of sodium hydroxide that contains those moles. And that gives you a molarity of 0 0.02152 molar sodium hydroxide. This now will be the substance that you place in the burette in order to analyze your unknown acid. The reason that you standardize your sodium hydroxide is because when you make up sodium hydroxide solutions, they're often contaminated, and so you need to standardize them to get a very clear and specific and precise molarity so that you can analyze your unknown acid. Let's briefly look at the proper use of a burette. A burette is a delivery device to deliver uh, your known concentration substance very precisely. One of the first things you'll do when you get your burette is rinse it with the titrant, the substance that you are going to, which would in this case be your sodium hydroxide. Rinse it with the titrant. You never rinse it with water um, because then that would leave beads of water that would dilute your very precise molarity of NaOH that you've worked hard to standardize. So rinse it with a few milliliters prior to titrating. The technique of titrating is to deliver very slowly and towards the end you're delivering dropwise uh, a known amount of titrant because when you know the exact volume of titrant you'll be able to analyze your analyte, your unknown acid. One of the more difficult and tricky things in the titration process is to get rid of these air bubbles that often trap themselves in the tip of the burette. You can tap them. You can also shake the burette vigorously to force the air bubble out. You can turn the stopcock quickly to allow uh, titrant to rush through, uh, but you need to get rid of this air bubble because, again, it is taking up volume space that you need to make sure does consist of the sodium hydroxide. When you're titrating, you want to make sure you have clear control over the stopcock. Uh, make sure that it is not too loose and not too tight so that you can carefully deliver a very precise amount of your sodium hydroxide. You will also need to make sure that you touch off these hanging drops and don't leave them hanging from the tip of the burette. As far as the burette's concerned, they've been delivered, so they need to get down into the flask where they can react. You also will use additional water from a wash bottle to rinse off those hanging drops and any other drops that collect on the outside of the burette. Wiping down the burette prior to titrating, if you have any um, solution of the sodium hydroxide on the outside of the burette, you need to wipe it down before you begin titrating so that it is not accidentally placed into the flask. When you're reading your burette, this is a delivery device and it is read downwards, not upwards. So for example, normally if you're thinking about a graduated cylinder and you're reading this meniscus and this is your 13, you might say 13 point, if that's the 5, 13.45 uh, or something along those lines. But you're actually to be reading the amount delivered. So you're reading down to the meniscus, not up to the meniscus. 
Reading the meniscus can be made easier, or it makes it easier to read, if you take a piece of paper that has a white and a black half and place the black end just slightly below the meniscus. This will darken it and allow you to get a much nicer reading. Again, don't forget when you're reading, you need to read down, not up. When you're titrating, you're looking for that last drop that will turn the indicator color, the palest color that it can, your eye can see, and it needs to remain for 30 seconds. Don't forget to wash off those hanging drops uh, and wash them off the sides of the flask and get them down in the flask as well. The pale pink color that you're looking for, again, sometimes a piece of white paper or a white surface will allow you to see that and it needs to remain for 30 seconds. This pink in the next picture is probably a little too dark. You've probably gone past the equivalence or end point by a drop or two. With practice, you will get better, and you're always going to do at least three trials. The very last thing you do before you begin your second trial is to record your data. Again, your initial volume and your final volume. So final volume minus initial volume will give you the delta V, and that's what you need in order to calculate your uh, unknown analyte.